This is a box of Legos. This is a box of Play-Doh. This is a gigantic goofball trying to tell you about computer science. I apologize for the quality of this video. I think very highly of John and he deserves better. But honestly, to do it right, I'd have had to write a script and get props in order and uh, basically I had to get this out the door. Which is kind of the whole point. Let's talk, let's get back to Legos and Play-Doh. <coughs> Software engineering, doing it right, writing down things that you should, is like having a bunch of Legos. Doing it the other way, just getting code out the door and writing stuff that looks cool and making sure it works well enough, that's pretty much Play-Doh. Let's look at Play-Doh. Play-Doh's fun. Here's a tube of Play-Doh right here. I want to make a snake. Man, Play-Doh's good at snakes. Everybody loves snakes, too. They're bitey and live in the forest. All right. Here we got an eye there. and Get a little another eye here. Man, Play-Doh is fun, and it's fast. I don't have to worry about anything. I just make my little snake, and there he is. I was made without software engineering principles, and I'm awesome. Okay, that's great. The snake's awesome. We don't have any tests for the snake. We're not using waterfall. It's nothing. Basically, I wanted a snake, and I made a snake, and I'm happy with him. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, let's get some Legos out here. Uh, I got some instructions. Ah, they're not snake-making instructions. Um, oh, let's see. I'll put this here. Oh, Legos are terrible at making snakes. But bam, they're awesome at making towers. Legos are great at towers. Towers are pretty boring next to the snake here. But uh, they're, they're still pretty cool. Here's a big difference between software engineering and... Uh, Here's our software engineering tower, and here's our non-software engineering snake. Sometimes things go wrong. Okay. Um, let's look at the tower here. I totally broke it. I could pound on it for a while, but, you know, really, I just broke it in half. So i got to fix this. i got to make it right. There we go. I've made it right. Now, uh, the snake, the Play-Doh snake without the software engineering principles. Ah, uh, that's, that's pretty screwed. I'm... Pretty much just gonna have to start over on the snake. Well, not really. I can. It's like starting over. I gotta do like the hard bits, doing his eyes and the mouth again. That's kind of what it's like. Look we'll back to me. I don't look as nice as the snake or the, uh, the tower. That's pretty much what it's like. Um, if you do things according to the principles, uh, it's it's a little more solid. But it takes longer, and you gotta use these instructions here sometimes. You gotta make a plan. And you got to follow the plan. Um, but the pieces themselves, since they're compartmentalized uh, and they're well tested, goodness gracious, these things are made under, under incredible pressure, and each piece is well tested before it gets out the door. And since they do that, building things in Legos makes them tougher, and you can build bigger things. It's harder to be expressive, it's harder to feel good about your life and all the cool stuff that you're doing, but you get to do cool things. Um, Software development in the real world, where you're actually shipping things, you've got to get it out the door, but it can't be crap. Uh, it's a balance between the two. I'm looking at my notes here. The, the two modes are different. There's a balance between the two. The balance is different at every workplace. When I work for a teeny tiny company where I'm on the phone directly with people, uh, get it out the door is kind of rule number one. As you get to a bigger company where they're trying to, they have a reputation to protect and brand is important, get it out the door is still important because they want to make money, but if it's not quality, it's, they're not going to let it out the door. They're going to cancel your project and maybe can you. Um, so it's different at every workplace. And when you get your own project and you get to decide what to do with it, it kind of comes with experience, whether, which way to do it. I'm going to try to back off here so you're not just staring at a gigantic head. Um, Let's see. Uh, it comes with experience, learning how much of the principles to apply. We'll get into a little more of that in just a second. Um, when you have the balance, when you feel like, you know, 70% test coverage is really all I need, and uh, doing code review for these sections of the code, that's what's really important, but doing code review for the whole thing may be a little overkill, you will have to fight for your balance. Like, when you decide how much is right for you, you're going to have to fight. And I've been in jobs where I had to fight to say, look, 
we can't add more tests right now. We have to get it out because if the customer doesn't see it, they're going to walk. And I've also had to fight for, you have to write some tests. This fight happens a lot more often in, in my career, and I'm still kind of young. Uh, but you will have to fight more often for, please, let's get some tests. I don't want to ship crap. Um, so let's, let's talk about shipping crap. Because that's everybody's favorite topic. Let's go back to no software engineering here for just a second, which is a perfectly viable way to make software for some occasions. So let's say I want to get down here, but you didn't really have time for that. You wanted to get the smiley face out the door. Now you've got a problem where there's a bug over here, and if I fix this bug over here, it moves that piece over there, and it causes three more bugs. This gets you into death march where by fixing one bug, you create three more, and it's so complicated that you can't tell where they're coming from. When you get into the death march, what you will want to do is look at your, your spaghetti gorp, and you'll want to say, oh, now that I see the whole picture, let's just replace it and start over. Don't do that. Don't ever throw away a working piece of software and try to start over. Uh, do, you, do you remember Netscape? No. Nobody remembers Netscape. I don't remember Netscape. You know why? Because they threw it away and they started over. I love Firefox. If you're into the, the history of computer science, and it's, I guess, recent history for me. I don't know how old you guys are, but uh, I love Firefox, but the people who worked at Netscape don't necessarily love it because they didn't make any money off of it. They don't have jobs, and it sinks, stinks not to have a job. See? Quality control. I need to retake this, but I won't because i got to ship it. It's a balance. You don't want a death march. You don't want uh, so little testing and so little planning that fixing one bug creates five more, and uh, you, you're either shipping crap or pushing the date out. You also don't want to overanalyze everything. The, what is the book? 55 Facts and Fallacies of Software Development? Great book. It says that uh, code review, sitting down with uh, the developer, two more people and, and one person to run the meeting to go through each line of code to make sure there are no bugs, that'll get rid of 90% of the bugs in a piece of code. Nine out of ten bugs that are there to begin with, you can get out with a code review. That's fantastic. But holy cow, you got like five people in a room for how many hours looking through your code? That's expensive. So it's a balance. You don't want to waste five. I mean, it's not a waste. It's 90% of your bugs out. But five people in a room, you got to be judicious about that. So it's a balance. That's what I'm saying. Here's something that I like that, that kind of demonstrates that balance pretty well. Hopefully, yeah, that looks all right. This is a book called Forbidden Lego. Uh, it is made by, this book was written by a couple of people who worked for Lego. Uh, it's about a set of models that they could not put out as the Lego company, because it requires that you do things that are not allowed with Legos. You have to saw through pieces, or glue pieces together for structural integrity, or rubber band pieces together. This is what good software looks like. Um, it's made with tested pieces. It's uh, a clear set of instructions. They're breaking the rules in a couple of places, but they're very explicit about it. They've written it down. They've written down the risks. They know what problems can come in the future, and they're planning around it. Managers love that kind of thing. When you tell them up front, here's how long I think it will take me, here are the risks, here is where I'm kind of bending the rules, where our test coverage is going to drop a little bit because this is a somewhat, it's a stochastic environment, it's going to be very difficult to test and we don't have the kind of resources that will generate this kind of risk. If you can be upfront with manager, managers about that, they love it because then they can put it in their little spreadsheets and talk with other managers about it. Uh, this comes with experience. Once you know uh, how to write tests, once you've written a bunch of tests, once you <laughs> have realized that you have 90% test coverage, but your tests are not really worthwhile because you're not checking the boundaries of whatever input var variable you're dealing with, once these things have kind of set in, you'll be a lot better at identifying what areas are risky, what areas are going to take you a long time, and what areas need a lot more planning. Uh, so that's my ridiculously silly video. Uh, regarding software engineering and whoa that's my second chin congratulations you found it uh... that's my silly video about software development and play-doh and legos and i hope you guys enjoy john's class he is a fantastic fellow 
uh, and I respect him a great deal. So thanks a lot. Bye.